this enormous broad range of things I think that uh, Castro can be very proud of in terms of leaving a, a long-lasting legacy. The fact that it's a seven-year centre has actually been perfect. Seven years allows you to do difficult things, it allows you to do ambitious things. They had a very strong vision of what they wanted to build from the start. They got the right people involved, so those key elements meant they could achieve all these wonderful things. The area where we've really changed things a lot and really been noticed is in the gender equity area. Castro had something really remarkable, which is that you had somebody who won the Nobel Prize, Brian Schmidt, who said, in the centre, this is the one activity that's most important to me and this is where I'm going to put my energy. That was an incredibly powerful message. We've made sure that we haven't had all male panels. When we put our programs together, we make sure that we have diversity not only in the gender but also across the spectrum of seniority in the speakers so we've got students ranging all the way through to quite senior professors that we look at where people are coming from when they give their talks so that we've got different um, ethnicities giving talks so that the content is diverse and interesting as well. They've tried to promote equity and diversity which I think is also very very critical to not just being a centre of excellence but a centre of quality, equity and excellence. When I first joined, I was the only female on that executive. There's now over 50% women on that executive. The big jump has been Castro-funded postdocs, which has jumped from 14% to 41%, which is a massive achievement. So getting quite close to the 50% mark, showing that it's actually achievable by providing childcare at conferences, family support for carers, family-friendly policies, core meetings between 10 and 3 has really you know, made a huge difference, again, to the culture that we have and the people that we can attract. You've really got to try and take that culture with you and wherever you go next, you have to try and bring these ideas, bring this way of working together. We produced the Gender Action Toolkit in the end that said these are the things we did in our centre that we think make a difference and that you might want to try in your own organisation. We have that on a website, it's downloadable for anybody to use with a lot of resources on the journey that we've taken. For me, what has made Castro really successful is great science and the ability to communicate that to the general public and other astrophysicists. We have a really creative outreach program that will continue beyond um, beyond Castro. We've created a couple of examples of best practice and people refer to that and that's excellent. So what we decided to do was run big projects. We produced a children's comic book with artists in Perth. This has gone to all Australian primary schools along with teaching notes. So this is a real resource that we've built. We produced a wall calendar that went to all Australian high schools. We produced a planetarium show uh, in collaboration with Museum Victoria. The planetarium show is showing nationally and it's being sold internationally. It's called Capturing the Cosmos, narrated by Jeffrey Rush, which was pretty exciting. We've used it for, for school engagement activities. Some of our people talk about themselves, their careers, and talk about the show and science generally afterwards. It's done well. I'm also really happy with the way that we reinvented in a way how um, research centres do social media. We have a YouTube channel, some of our YouTube videos have had up to a million hits. We made sure that our social media are not just because we have to do them, but we were responsive. We didn't automate them, it was literally if people wanted to talk to us we would actually reply. Whatever we produce has some sort of reuse value. We don't just do things because it's expected of us, but because we actually believe that this has value in, in public outreach and in school outreach. In terms of outreach, I think Castro in the Classroom was a really novel idea. It was a great use of uh, modern day technology, getting the message out to people who don't necessarily have the opportunities to get to great science talks because they live in regional centres, getting um, teachers engaged as well as the kids and in some cases even parents. I got so many comments from kids and teachers that they just want to be astronomers, that's all they want to do and any time you get a kid and you, you, know, you get them to look through a good telescope, they love it. If at the end of the day it, it inspires a three-year-old to read more books on space or anything that's scientific, the inspiration that you can give to the younger generation is what's going to move science forward. We had the Uluru Partnership, which was uh, two programs within the partnership. One was 
um, the Astronomy Weekend, which was once a year, but the other one was the Uluru Astronomy Residence. We spend two weeks in the Australian Outback and you have little experiment things, you chat about science, you have telescopes set up, you meet people from all over the world. The Uluru program will continue, telescopes in schools will continue, Castro in the classroom will continue. It's not like any of it is really going to end, so Castro built up this, um, this great momentum and it doesn't stop just because Castro itself won't exist anymore. The A team in Castro is the administration team and I guess they're the people that really keep the centre running and, and keep everything working smoothly behind the scenes so that all the scientists get on with doing their science. I think just having an A-team in general has meant that you know the research staff aren't worrying about all those administrative things that need to get done. What has made Castro so successful is high quality people. The vision was provided by the, the leadership of the original director of Brian Gainsler but then it's been really well rolled out by having a really strong chief operating officer in Kate Gunn and then she's built a really strong team around her. I came from a business background, I came into it uh, thinking that you know I'd help help start it up and that I wouldn't stay, I've loved it so much. I stayed the whole seven years. The admin team's so helpful, and I guess just trying to organise all the Castro events super useful. And you get to come to these places to to meet people and form these great connections in astronomy that will last hopefully for the rest of my career. My role as events manager has allowed um, our events to reach a, a, a more professional level because I look after all the small details, I look after all the organisation. The researchers do a lot of collaboration, they do that by networking, they do that by holding conferences and Castro has allowed them to hold those conferences and for us to facilitate that for them which has really changed the whole collaboration culture. Castro is known throughout the ARC Centres of Excellence for running fantastic events. Work comes out of it that would otherwise be generated. People come and talk to us about our conferences and events and our um, childcare programs. So I'm often writing to people about how we set that up and how we manage that. It's worked both for men and women and you know they're much more able to give talks and presentations because they know that their children are being looked after. It's just part of the culture now and everybody knows that it's available and they can take advantage of it. I am the Castro Postdoc Committee Chair. It's really about sort of all the concerns and needs of early career researchers. We try to initiate any sort of like information or activities that could be really useful for postdocs. The student committee as a whole is focused on trying to make sure students have enough resources and enough access to information that they might need support, guidance, and we try and come up with innovations that will help students progress. Castro has brought a whole group of people together and really changed the way that we do science, and I think that legacy will last well beyond the lifetime of Castro. Castro has been the best way of connecting with other Australian astronomers, meet people from diverse backgrounds in research and, and hear about their ideas and start collaborating with them. It's opened up so many new possibilities, it's just been fantastic for me. The science, it's too big. The question we're trying to answer are too large for any one person or a small group of people at a single university to be able to answer that. So it takes people working all around the country and also international uh, partners which Castro has been able to facilitate. It brings all the greatest minds within the continent together to work on some amazing projects. And to be a part of this collaborative environment as a student is, is a very fruitful experience for me and from job perspectives as well. The access it's given me as a young researcher when I started at Castro seven years ago, to, to be honest, to some of the best scientists in the country. And I think the boost that that's given to my career is sort of unquantifiable in, in, you know, in terms of what that will do for me in the long run. It's really gone from the old guard of uh, researchers who already have established careers talking to each other and to an audience to giving a platform for young researchers to come up and say, these are my ideas, this is my work, what do you think of it? I think Castro's really demonstrated what an ARC Centre of Excellence can be and can achieve. It has set a very high benchmark for other centres. Yes, it's come to an end and that's sad, but you know, new centres are coming, new initiatives are coming and, and we're all going to go out into the world and do 
do exciting things that have built on what we've done here.